this is XVG, your sort of not really monthly roundup of what's big in video games and all that. And it's an absolute pleasure to see you again. Have you had your hair cut? This week we're talking cyborgs, good walk spoiled, and we're also going to be giving away a couple of pairs of tickets to the Eurogamer Expo 2010 in it, blood. First though, here's a few new releases, both near and far. If you're not familiar with the Deus Ex series, the original hit our screens at the turn of the century, bringing with it some of the most ambitious, layered, and in the end, ultimately groundbreaking gameplay the PC gaming world has ever seen. Set in the not-too-distant future, players were encouraged to find different ways to complete tasks. You had your fight, you had your flight. Oh and your computer hacking as well. Consistently touted as being one of the greatest video games ever made, the second game, which came three years later, was a bit of a disappointment to some people. Levels were shorter due to the memory constraints of the Xbox, graphics hadn't moved on massively, but still, the branching plot lines were still there, and if you've played a game like Mass Effect or Fallout 3, you'll find that vast swathes of the experience drew much from titles such as Deus Ex 1 and Deus Ex 2. So, on to Deus Ex Human Revolution. One of the main pillars of the original game was the use of nanotechnology, the grey goo, the sort of thing that Prince Charles wakes up in a cold regal sweat about. Well, in the new game, set a few years before the first one, they're not quite there yet. Human augmentations take on a more mechanical Terminator style. Metal limbs, ceramic hair, stuff like that. This time round, you take on the form of Adam, a human security specialist for a biotech firm. A bit of industrial espionage has gone tits up, and it looks like you've misplaced your arms. A quick spot of nanotechery later, and you're as good as new, if not better. Set in a futuristic world, Adam travels to Shanghai, Detroit, and a place that's surely a video game first, Montreal. <laughs> Early indications are that this will hit the shelves early next year on PC, 360 and PS3. So, if you've got even a passing interest in immersive, imaginative storytelling, you just keep an eye out, alright? Here's a couple of new releases that should be coming away very soon. John Daly's Pro Stroke Golf. He's the bad boy of golf with an explosive backswing, and now he's got a PS3 Move title to match. I played a round or two of this last week, and although admittedly it was my first handling of a Move controller, it did seem wonderfully responsive and built with this very control system in mind. When you're actually taking your swing, the first person perspective does make all the difference, and the simple pivot of the wrist gives you all the hook and draw you'll need to make it down that fairway. Graphically, it's a little behind the new Tiger Woods game and with a slightly more cluttered screen, but that's kind of a metaphor for the two golfers. Tiger's fairly good looking and John looks like that Chav lottery winner who spent it all on drugs and quad bikes. And although it is out on the 8th of October on PC and 360, the definitive experience probably has to be the PS3 move, which is a match made in golf heaven. Which is a heaven that only recently allowed ethnic minorities and women in. Boom! Take that, golf! Another title coming out very soon is... F1 2010, the follow-up to, yes, you guessed it, Dinosaur Crossbow Hunter Extreme 3. Well, okay, it was Formula 1 2009. Released on the 24th of September, it's another chance to put whatever thing Formula 1 drivers wear and get into whatever bit of the car is best to drive it with and zoom around whatever track is where all the people are watching and clapping. As you can probably tell, I'm not a Formula 1 fan, but stuff like automatic braking, visual racing lines, and the very decent visual effects make the experience an enjoyable one for me. And speaking to the developers, there's some really rather interesting stuff included. Stuff like the variable weather systems, overhanging trees providing dry spots on a, a wet track, tracks becoming less slippy as racing weekends go on due to the rubber being laid down by the cars. It's definitely the sort of thing that probably won't enchant the casual gamer, but the authenticity deviance of this game world, I'll probably be whooping and cheering at the merest thought of it. 
And on the other side of the racing game coin, which is a currency with very few uses, is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Now, this game doesn't take itself quite as seriously, and it's a decidedly brash and combative update to the Need for Speed franchise. And you either play as a furious cop or wily criminal, both of which have a career mode and story arc in each. So you can either live out your fantasies as Sheriff John Bunnell or Harriet Harmon. Look at this Labour leader. She thinks she's Minister of the Road. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is out on the 19th of November. Now, I thought this week, after looking at Moonstone, Monkey Island 2 and Urban Chaos in my gaming retrospective section last time, I thought I'd go back to an Amiga game from 1992, remembered and loved by hardly anyone Pushover. Heavily funded by the Quaver Company, this game was a surprisingly accomplished puzzle, it all said, and the storyline went like this. Right, so promotional spokes dog Colin eats a Quaver, goes into some sort of anaphylactic shock, drops his bag of crisps down an anthill, and then a talking bipedal ant, showing very little self-awareness, can't believe what he's seeing, and vows to help the dog out by completing a series of compelling Domino Rally-inspired puzzles. <coughs> I spent weeks trying to smash through the hundreds of monstrously difficult levels only to get this ending. Well, that was worth it, wasn't it? Jesus. Right, just before we go, I say we, it's pretty much just me, it's time for bad video game box art. Up at three this week, ooh, can anyone spell lawyer's writ? CRL proving that they just don't give a flying toss about copyright law. In at two, the quite spectacular plumbers don't wear ties. Less of a game, more of a Deirdre's photo case book. Awful. Finally, in at one, Bill Clinton's upsetting hat. Or Tommy Lasorda baseball, even. Now, I don't actually know who this man is, but a quick Google gives me this. Not this, this. But definitely not this. This. Right, that's it for me, but if you want to be at this year's Eurogamer Expo 2010 for free and all that, just email podcast at spong.com with the subject line, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. This is for tickets to the Sunday event, and we'll draw two lucky winners from the email competition at random at midnight on Wednesday the 29th. Lovely stuff. I've been Pete Donaldson. See you next time.